Hello Cornerstone Livingstone. It's so good to see all of you. Welcome to another Sunday online service worship time. Uh, we're so glad that you guys can tune in and join us for today. We hope you all had a wonderful week um, and that you guys had a wonderful time with your Father's Day Bingo Mission. Um, not only that, I know that some of you guys have already signed up for our small groups starting next week for the month of July. I know that and we got word that some of your parents already took uh, pick up, picked up your like small group packages, which is awesome. Uh, your leaders and TAs are super excited to see you guys. And for those of you who didn't or couldn't sign up for this month, and that's too bad, but it's okay because signups for small groups for August will be up shortly and we will notify your parents. And so make sure that if you guys want to sign up but couldn't or didn't this time, make sure you guys sign up for August so that you guys can join in in the small groups which will take place after Sunday service for both 9.30 a.m. and also 11.30 a.m. Okay, so we want to continue with this month's theme, which was what again? That's right, focus. And today we want to focus, of course, on God's Word, right? That's a no-brainer. But we also want to take a look at God's plans. We want to focus in on God's plans, the things that He revealed to not only His people during the early church, right, when the disciples and the apostles were there, but also um, His plans that He revealed that are continuing up till today and what God is doing and continue to do throughout the ages. And so we were focusing on the book of Acts for a lot of um, our messages. And so once again today, we're going to dive in to the book of Acts, but this time chapter 10. So when you look at the story thus far in the book of Acts, we know that many people came to believe Jesus. The number of the church was growing day by day. And we know that the disciples of Jesus, they were given the gift of the Holy Spirit. We know that people like Saul, who used to hunt down Christians, became a follower of Christ. And so now he's Paul the Apostle. And Paul is going out and spreading the good news about Jesus. And many people come to believe. And now during this time, Peter, of course, was also going around spreading the good news. And one day, Peter went to this place called Joppa. And he was there because people called him uh, because some, some elderly woman had passed away. And she was a kind woman who cared for others, and she was also a follower of Jesus. And she passed away, and Peter went down there, and he prayed for her, and she came back to life. Which is crazy, right? But... Not only that, Peter was going around doing many miracles in the name of Jesus, and many people came to believe. And of course, when uh, that elderly woman came back to life, many people in Joppa came to believe in Jesus. And now Peter was staying there and continuing to teach and preach about Jesus, and he stayed at um, the house of a man named Simon. And this, starting from this point, is where I want to focus on today's message. Now, roughly about 40 miles north from where Peter was staying in Joppa, there was a Roman commander, a captain. And he was in charge of some of the Italian uh, Roman soldiers. And his name was Cornelius. And Cornelius was not a Jew. He was not from Israel. He was a Gentile. But even though Cornelius was a Gentile, the interesting thing is Cornelius believed in God. He was a God-fearing man who prayed daily to the Lord, and he was very um, generous in giving alms and helping the poor. And so he was a very well-respected man, even among the Jews. Because this, like, he's not even a Jew, he's a Gentile, yet he does all these, he tries to do all these things that the Jews are doing. Now, one day, Cornelius was praying, like he often did. 
And while he was praying, an angel of the Lord appeared before Cornelius. And in the angel, right, this is a vision, he's having a vision while he's praying, and the angel tells Cornelius that God has heard Cornelius' prayers, and he knows what Cornelius has been doing, and it is like a good offering to God. And so the angel tells Cornelius, look, go and call for a man by the name of Peter. He's staying in Joppa at Simon's house. And so after Cornelius calls two servants and one of the soldiers, and he tells them everything that's happened, and he says, go, go to Joppa, find this man by the name of Peter and bring him to me. And so the two servants and the soldiers, they go off looking for Peter. Now, the interesting thing is, during this time, Peter was also, of course, as is his habit, praying to the Lord. Peter went up to the roof, and he's praying to the Lord. Now, it's, it's almost meal time, and the meal is being prepared. So Peter's like, he's hungry, right? Because he's like, oh man, I, you know, I, I, didn't, I need to eat lunch, or whatever it is. He's like, he's hungry, but he's praying as he's waiting for his meal. And while he's pay, praying, he kind of falls into this trance and sees a vision. And what he sees is four, like a sheet being dropped down by the corners, right? And the sheet is, fall, is coming down like this. And inside the sheet, he sees all sorts of animals, right? And as Peter was looking at these animals, he suddenly heard a voice say to Peter, to himself, the voice said, Peter, go kill them and eat them. And Peter's like, oh, Lord, no way. I, I can't do that because these animals are unclean. Now, what did Peter mean when he said these animals were unclean? Well, when, we, they, when you look at the Jewish rules, the laws, right, that were given since the time uh, of Moses, God gave the Israelites, his chosen people, these laws. Well, there were certain types of animals that they were forbidden to eat because those animals were considered to be unclean. And so every Jew knew what those animals were and that they, and so they never ate it. And so Peter is saying, no, I can't eat these animals. I'm not going to eat those animals. I've never eaten those animals because according to our Jewish law, which was given by God, you know, many, many years ago, they're unclean. Now, this vision happened three times. So Peter heard the voice tell him to eat these animals. And Peter said, no, they're unclean. This happened three times. Now, Peter's wondering... After that, he's wondering, like, okay, what's going on? What does this mean? And at that time, the two servants and the soldier arrives, right? Because they found out where Peter was staying. And they're like, okay, Peter, we're from, you know, another place. And a Roman commander, Cornelius, came here to bring you to his house. And Peter's like, okay. Uh, why? What's going on? And so they tell him that the story of Cornelius, of how he was praying, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him and told him to go find Peter. And so Peter's like, okay, but guess what? At that moment, the Holy Spirit tells Peter, it's okay, go with them, because this is part of the plan. And so Peter obeys, right? And so the next day, he goes with them, to Cornelius's house. And so finally, they arrive at Cornelius's house. And meanwhile, during that time, Cornelius had called all his family relatives to come to his house in preparation. Now, when Peter got there, Peter said that he came to Cornelius's house without objection. Because you know, like for the Jews, they didn't enter into a Gentile's house like that, right? They didn't associate with Gentiles in that way. They weren't allowed to do that. And yet, Peter still decided to go to Cornelius' house. Why? Well, because first, the vision that he had seen. 
And second, because the Holy Spirit told him to do so. And so Peter says that he came without objection because of those things. And so he says, why have you called me? And Cornelius starts to tell Peter what happened. Remember, he was praying and the angel of the Lord came to him and told him to go call Peter. Now, when Peter heard this, do you know what he said? Well, we're going to look in the Bible, okay? So if you have your Bibles, please open your Bible to Acts chapter 10. And what we're going to look at today, the specific verse I would like to look, is in Acts chapter 10, verse 34, starting from 34. So open your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation, he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That back in the day, the way that the Jews, you know, the, even like disciples of Jesus, the way they saw and the way they thought, it was very different to how things are today. And yet, also very similar. Uh, I'll explain that a little bit more later. But the point is, Peter realizes that God specifically chose him to go to Cornelius and to share the gospel. Even though Cornelius and his family, his relatives, they're Gentiles. They're not Jews. They're not Israelites. They're not God's chosen people. And yet... God is telling and showing Peter, I want you to tell them about Jesus. What this means is, so Peter tells them about who Jesus is and what Jesus did. And Cornelius and his family, his relatives, they believe what Peter told them. And they were baptized. And not only that, they received the gift of the Holy Spirit as well even though they weren't God's chosen people. And so they too became Jesus' followers. Now, why is this story, right, in the Bible, and it actually happened, but why is this story important for us today? What does this story have to do with you guys, you Cornerstone and Livingstone kids? Like, what, what's the relation? Huh? What, why is this important? Well, here's the thing. We, right, as in me and you guys, we're not Jews, right? We're either Korean American, Korean American, right? We, most of us here are Korean American, right? And yet, that means we're not Jews, we're not Israelites, we are not God's chosen people. Or at least we weren't. And yet you guys and me, we're all, we all call ourselves disciples of Jesus. We also believe that Jesus died for our sins and that we are saved. That's why this story is so important to all of us. Because it shows God's plan for not just the Israelites, but for the whole world. You see, not even the closest disciples and followers of Jesus imagined or dreamed of. They couldn't fathom what God had planned for the whole world. They thought that as Jews and Israelites, they were the only ones who were going to be saved, that they were the only ones who were chosen. And yet, God had bigger plans. Because of God's mercy and grace, because of his love for you guys, he knew that by sending Jesus and Jesus dying on the cross and being raised from the dead, he was not only going to save the Israelites, but he was also going to save all who believe. Even Cornerstone and Livingstone kids, even you guys who are not Jews, even me, right? I'm not an Israelite, and yet we can all be saved when we believe in Jesus. And so Peter 
did not think about this. He well, he didn't know that God was planning this, and yet, what do we see? We see the first thing: Peter obeys, and the Holy Spirit tells him what to do. And so, this is very important for us today because today we live in a global world where technology is so advanced. The whole world is connected now. We're not if the world isn't like. How it was back then, like two thousand years ago, right? Like, look at look at California. We have all sorts of different people from different cultures, from different nations living together, and obviously, many problems and issues arise. But if we can learn anything from today's lesson, the first thing is this: It doesn't matter what race you are, what color you are, where you come from. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is, what your culture is. If a person accepts Jesus as their savior, then they too are saved, and they too become children of God, just like you and me. As Christians, we need to remember because our church, most of the people at our church are Korean Americans, right, or Koreans, and so a lot of times we forget that. Look, there are all sorts of Christians around the world today. You know, in Mexico, Brazil, Japan, in Europe, Germany, Belgium, in Africa, there are many Christians around across the world. And we may think differently, act differently, talk differently. We are all God's people, and we are all one body of Jesus. So we should never look down on other people just because. They look different, or they act differently, or they speak differently. We are all—all all followers of Christ—are God's children. This also means that you, Cornerstone Living Stone kids, it doesn't matter what other people call you. It doesn't matter what they think about you, right? You know, other people might look down on you, right? For because you're different. From how other people are, or because maybe you're a kid, so they look down on you, or they think they're better than you, and so they belittle you. Well, guess what? Don't believe and fall for those lies, and because God loves you like He loves anyone else, everyone else, right? And Peter talks about how God doesn't show favoritism in that kind of way, in this kind of situation. And Peter talks about how if you are a follower of Jesus, you are also a child of God. And not only that, in the Bible, it says that God made you fearfully and wonderfully. So never forget, your identity lies in your relationship with Jesus and God. That is your central, number one, most important identity of who you are, not the things. That this world and other people tell you that you are. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is, you know, earlier on I talked about and shared with you guys about missions, right? About being a part of God's grand mission, His plan. And today we see a part of God's plan. He wants to. He wants and knows that there are people around the world who don't know who Jesus is, and yet they want to know. They want. They are. Like Cornelius, they believe in God and they pray and they live a life where it's not about just themselves, right? And yet they don't know Jesus, and this is one of the reasons why we do missions. Because guess what? Peter was a disciple of Jesus, and God told and showed and sent Peter to the Gentile. And in the same way, as Jesus followers and disciples. Just like Peter and the other disciples and apostles, we too are called to be a part of God's plan, God's mission. And so, remember, last year, right? We sent, we donated money and we raised up money to send Bibles to Kenya. Why? Because those people, even though they wanted to know and learn about Jesus, they didn't have the money. They didn't have the means to get a Bible. They couldn't read. The Bible, which is God's word, which is the truth, and so many of you guys helped raise money to send Bibles to Kenya, which is awesome, by the way, super duper awesome. 
And that is just one way that you guys were able to participate in missions yourselves, right? And so keep that in mind and remember always that Acts chapter 10, right? One of the reasons why we do missions is because that is what God told and showed Peter, who is a disciple of Jesus. And the same way we too are God's and Jesus's. We are Jesus's disciples. Okay? All right. Well, don't forget that starting next week after service, we will be doing small groups for those of you guys who did sign up for small groups. For those of you guys who didn't or couldn't, don't worry. We're going to start a new sign up for a small group starting on August. So make sure you tell your parents uh, to contact me or if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to send them the sign up sheet sometime uh, next week or the week after. Okay. All right. Well, let me pray for you guys and I'll see you all next week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you have sent Jesus to die for the sins of not just the Jews and the Israelites who were your chosen people, but for the whole world. Lord Father, you have chosen, you had planned this, even though no human knew. But through the story today, what you showed Peter, and through that event, how Peter went back and told the early church that this was your desire and intention. You decided and you chose intentionally to call and save the Cornerstone and Livingstone kids. Lord Father, we thank you so much for that. And so we pray for them. We pray for our Cornerstone Livingstone departments and their whole families that we too will also remember that people who may look differently than us and who talk differently than us, they are also your creation. You created them uniquely and you are planning to share the truth with other people as well. And so we pray that we'll be reminded this of this every day and that the Cornerstone and Living Soul Kids will continue to learn your truth and share that truth with people all over the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil ones. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.